we are. So that's me. We can go into the next slide. Is that it's great? Um, so this is the house I live in on an acreage, and we're very close to the mountains in um, um, in Alberta. I've been doing this for a long time. This picture of me when I'm about 12, and I'm preaching the uh, virtues of integrated greenhouses, which um, used to be a good idea, but it's not a good idea anymore. Next slide. So this is where I live, um, and that's uh, in the um, not in any city. It's north of Calgary, and it's west of Red Deer and south of Edmonton. Um, really, not any place in particular. About 45 hour drive from Toronto, and um, over a 12 hour drive from Vancouver. Um, I am the uh, president of Passive Buildings Canada and the treasurer for Passive House Alberta, and I'm a member of uh, Passive House Canada. Um, next slide. So just a quick definition, I see that wood is used quite a few times in this definition, but uh, wood foundation is, is uh, built of wood. And the wood is preserved to resist deterioration and rot from um, uh, water and from insects. So next slide. So uh, why use a preserved wood foundation? And, and uh, to be honest, I've um, been involved in projects with preserved wood foundations for a long time. And it is a preferred foundation. It's the first, my first go-to. I try and convince all my clients to use wood foundation first. Um, so some of those reasons are special equipment's not needed. Um, specialty trades are not needed. You don't need forms on site. Uh, it's a little less weather dependent for installation um, than concrete is um, um, in terms of freezing weather. Um, they, the panels can be prefabricated and, and more than once um, for projects I've worked on, uh, panels were being prefabricated um, when it was too cold to work on anything else and they're brought out of the shop as soon as spring came. Um, it's possible to avoid using concrete completely, which is something that um, many of us have become aware of, of, of the positive aspects of. Uh, it's really easy to insulate, which is one of my favorite things about wood foundations. Um, also, uh, when we're building on a tight lot, it eats up less interior space than concrete does when we're trying to add insulation to it and wood is a carbon sink. And then the next slide, and the reasons for not using wood foundation, um, engineering is required. And some people perceive that as a added expense and perhaps not, um, a lot of people don't like working with engineers. I love working with engineers, but um, a lot of people also have a lack of experience with um, preserved wood foundations and don't feel very confident with them. They're not as common as they were once. Um, and a lot of people have had bad experiences with poorly installed um, PWF foundations, and that is really too bad, and it's really um, uh, had a, um, a bad effect on, on the perception of, of wood foundations. Um, you really need to have attention to detail. Um, it's not something that just gets slapped up, because those ones that got slapped up are, are the ones that uh, fall down. And uh, there's concerns about uh, the de devaluation of wood foundations. Uh, um, or devaluing a property if a wood foundation is used. And that's not untrue. In other words, um, without an engineer certificate, uh, without um, proper um, inspections, um, a wood foundation can devalue your property. Um, there's a misbelief that concrete is stronger than wood, which is not true. Um, we know that concrete is not very strong and that uh, the strength in concrete comes from the steel and the concrete. Um, a couple of things that are true, though, it's difficult to anchor uh, for wind loads to wood foundation. It's also um, um, problematic and it could be problematic in seismic areas without proper engineering. And these days, it's really hard to find the material. So there isn't enough um, um, of a market for it. And um, it's, fine, it's becoming increasingly difficult to find preserved wood material. Next slide. So there's chemicals in, in uh, preserved wood and they're not very nice, especially um, in CCA uh, wood, which is still used. I think some people think that it's not used and it certainly is used. It's certainly um, um, incised CCA um, wood is definitely used in, in wood foundations in this part of the world. Um, but these chemicals are, are um, quite well bound to the wood and there's really no fear of off-gassing and as long as you're not licking the wood or trying to eat it, it's reasonably safe. Next slide. Uh, this um, um, information came from Chris Magwood. Uh, this is using Chris's uh, new software um, for 
figuring out the carbon storage for materials. So this is comparing uh, wood foundations with the information that he has uh, with um, concrete. And um, it looks like wood foundations are a carbon sink. What we don't have good emission, Good. We don't have good information about the energy that's used for preserving wood, and so these numbers might change in the future. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah, sorry. Uh, um, there's a little, sometimes there are uh, sketches that people accidentally put onto the slides. I saw and, that. People yeah, were drawing on it. Yeah, and so I need to go clear that, and then um, okay. it, it, I need to then exit out of something so it sorry but if but if, i'm going to uh, be able if, to draw right zach i'll be able yeah, to draw you can yeah. absolutely draw and i will awesome. try not to clear your drawings thank okay. you okay okay great <laughs> so um this is another map of canada and um a couple of things to note on this and actually i guess i can draw it this time is um that this is uh this this is toronto and that's vancouver and this is the rest of canada so um there is uh, a, a lot of um area outside of those two areas and and all of the area in the yellow is really far away from concrete plants the yellow and the green a lot of those places don't there's no concrete to be had if you even if you wanted it uh, northern manitoba and northern Sask saskatchewan wood foundations are pretty common because they don't really have a choice okay next slide so a lot of the information that I use, and this is a bit of a Bible in terms of wood foundations for me, uh, the go-to manual, and that's um, uh, uh, the Canadian Wood Council's book on wood, wood foundations. And so I'm just gonna go through some basics um, for wood foundations. And so one of the very first things is the fact that um, um, there needs to be good drainage and a sump in, in wood foundations, it's, it's important. The backfill that's used for the for wood foundations shouldn't just be the site um, material, it really should be well-drained material pit run if you can find it. Um, the Again, um, as I said before, you don't need to use um, concrete for the slab. Uh, wood sleepers are fine. Uh, and there's all kinds of rules behind that. And most of those rules have to do with making sure that uh, water can't get into the, into the building and that, um, um, that there's a lot of good drainage. Uh, there's a lot of rules around pads, a lot of wood put into pads. There's a lot of, um, I'll just change that arrow. There's um, a lot of um, members used. There's also some problems, some problems, a lot of wood used along stairways and there's openings right beside the wood foundation. Um, maybe more wood than, than you could imagine is being used. Um, and then some rules around how beam pockets work. Um, concrete footings. Um, are, can be used with wood foundations. So um, for the wood council, from the point of view of the people who know about wood foundations, uh, the ideal is putting uh, wood footings on top of gravel. But concrete footings um, are easier, They're, they take less time and can be less expensive. The big deal about um, using concrete footings is to be sure again that water can't sit on top of or underneath the footings. So either the footings are poured over gravel or, um, or there's a way, uh, there's a PVC added to the footings so that water can, can not sit in and around footings. Next slide. So size of building doesn't matter. This house, um, on, uh, this is the same house. Um, and one picture is um, a house before it was renovated. So this is a project I worked on um, in the late eighties and early nineties uh, for a family. And this is one of those integrated greenhouses that um, just probably was uh, probably not a good idea, just too big. Um, the young, there was uh, a young lady who lived in this house with her family and she grew up and she bought it from her parents and decided that she'd like to make some changes, which was a good thing. So I got to work on a renovation of a house that I'd done 30 years later. Um, and I just want to show you some of the things that went on with this building that has a wood foundation. Next slide. So back in the day, um, this is what we did for drawings before um, there was computer, the computers were available. And this is the hand drawings with all the details and how this wood foundation, how this house went together and, and how the wood foundation was integrated into um, this project. And this is a photo, of course, of the framing. Next slide. So what we did um, with this project was um, we created a post 
underneath a post, a treated post underneath a post. And this is some of the details. So this is um, the post was built up underneath with a, a double eye joist above for the really tall wall in that greenhouse. Um, all on wood footings, the whole place is on wood footings and a very big differential in um, backfill, high backfill on one side and low on the, on, on the walk outside. Oh yeah, and um, that was me doing a site visit. Another, next slide. So um, the photo on the left-hand side is a is, um, photo of um, during construction. And as we tore apart the greenhouse uh, 30 years later, we found that there was absolutely no, um, no problems in terms of, of um, water damage or any impact from the backfill um, in the greenhouse. This was a multi-leveled space with a hot tub in the middle and all of that got torn out. Next slide. What we did find though, um, which is pretty amazing, uh, because um, acoustical sealant is supposed to stay wet forever, and I'm sure everybody's been told that, but there was acoustical sealant that had been exposed to the air in this basement, and it was dry. Um, so, so this is a photo to prove that. Uh, the other photo um, on the right-hand side is a, a wood footing that um, is behind, was behind some backfill, and there's just absolutely no sign of any damage or, or water uh, infiltration at all. Next slide. Um, as I said earlier, the um, panelization of foundation is um, um, one of the conveniences. And in this case, this house um, was um, brought to site, a pretty remote site, um, northwest of Calgary. Um, the whole foundation was panelized in a shop and brought to the site, um, as were the, the walls for this little house too. This young lady is now um, in architecture school. Not mine, somebody else's. Next slide. A pretty big house, um, mostly slab on grade and a two story over the garage for this project. And next slide. And I thought I'd show you this one because we did two things here. Um, um, on one side of the, of the house, what we did was frame the south wall quite differently than the rest of, of the house. So it's a two by six wall that's strapped. And on this side, and so that's on the right hand side. And this side we have a um, a short preserved wood foundation, and uh, there is a um, insulated skirt uh, around that side of the foundation. But on the other side, on the north side, we did a um, Larson truss wall with an integrated um, uh, bearing wall. And on, on that side, we did a slab thickening instead of the wood foundation. So we combined um, foundation types in this case. It made sense at the time. Um, next slide. So one of the things that we did, um, did and um, often a detail is with the slab thickening is to, um, stop just brushing this across here, is to do the door box um, with uh, wood foundation uh, outside of the, of the slab thickening, uh, just so that we have some bearing for, uh, for the doors. And um, the other drawing on the left-hand side is just to show the insulated skirt for the shallow foundation, which is that's only um, 19 inches, the whole foundation. So, you know, frost gets down to about eight feet in this area. So we do need to protect from frost. Next slide. Uh, this is that foundation. This is looking from the south side. And so this is the wood foundation with the insulation on the inside um, and the foundation walls were used as forms for pouring the slab. Next slide. So this is a house um, in Calgary um, that was, um, uh, was part of the equilibrium program um, uh, in 2010, 2011. And the secret that this house has is that it has a wood foundation. So next slide. Um, this wood foundation is um, a balloon framed on three sides and um, it uh, is, uh, has wood footings over um, gravel wood plates over top of gravel footings for um, its footings and it is um, was reasonably complicated because of high backfill and uh, walkout. Next slide. So the great thing about this project is that we had tons of really good photos. So I'm going to walk you through the process of, of this um, project. 
So this is the footing layout uh, for, for the project. And uh, the thing to note here is that um, this is a wet land in this area and all of the um, footings, the bottom side of the footings flow to this corner and eventually into a pond that's over here. So there's no weeping tile, it's all just um, below the below grade drainage. Next slide. Um, this is how you do a chalk line in gravel and that's with a um, um, jackhammer. Uh, you can see the chalk line in, in this photo, in this photo right here. Next slide. Um, the footings are huge, um, really not a one man project and or one girl project. The, um, you can see that leveling them is, is a pain um, and it's a hands and knees operation. Next slide. Um, and then leveling the plates and gravel is not easy either. So um, um, it does take some patience. Next slide. And uh, so this, the next few slides will just show the erection of the walls um, over, over the gravel, next slide. And showing um, the difference in height between um, as, as the um, um, landscape changed in this, in this location. So that tall wall is, um, I think the backfill on that tall wall is about 11 feet, next slide. And as um, the walls are being erected, um, the walls need to be braced, um, which is something that you don't need to do with concrete uh, this in the same way. Next slide. Uh, the other really great thing about um, wood foundations is, is um, that this part that's gonna be buried, so this will be buried um, gravel um, on both sides. So this is looking from the garage. So where my arrow is, is going to be the garage. Um, slab up at, at the top of the wall and the outside of this uh, wall will have um, gravel, the gravel driveway. And then this part is the house. So this is really easy to insulate and bury below, um, um, below grade and uh, gives us a great buffer from, from the exterior. Next slide. When I saw this, slide, this photo the other day, I just freaked out because that's not Stego. And we, um, um, but and it's just six mil poly, but what we would used to do is bury it so it wouldn't get all racked. And um, I'm not sure that I would do the same procedure um, now, but you can see the um, plywood on the inside of the foundation to the height of where the foundation um, or the slab will be, or the gravel will be in the insulation and the gravel and, and uh, the slab. Next slide. And then it snows in winter. So that does put us, that is a problem sometimes. Next slide. Um, more insulation um, being installed here. And you can see that where the backfill is very high, how close the studs are together. And um, for this wall, which is a sheer wall, um, it's an interior wall. And so it's built with white wood, not um, treated wood, um, with the bottoms of the studs being field treated. Um, which is completely adequate and, and fine. Next slide. I wanted to show this slide just to show how these um, um, Larson trusses, these site build trusses work. Um, the um, bearing part of the truss sits on, on the, bear, on the uh, wood foundation and it's cantilevered and just hanging over uh, the outside of the, of the foundation and we'll have rigid insulation installed underneath it um, after this, this part of the work is done. Next slide. And again, some bracing. So that's a, this is a good picture of the bracing and, um, and how extensive it needs to be. Next slide. A balloon framing um, for the floor system. And you can see that this wall, this wall right here had to be higher than, um, than the floor system itself, which is really easily integrated into the walls, wall framing system um, um, as, the, as the walls went up. Next slide. Um, adding exterior insulation and there's, um, this contractor had this interesting idea of doing a poly flash between, um, between the layers of insulation on the outside just to um, give an added redundancy to be sure that uh, there would be no problem with water getting um, behind the insulation and down in, beside the wood, um, wood foundation wall. Next slide. Um, Rigid insulation skirt really required for the shallow foundation on the exposed side of the of the uh, foundation, and another better 
picture of, of the uh, Larson trusses. Also, the um, uh, foundation coating is only being applied where there's going to be some backfill. Even though it's completely buried um, behind insulation, there's still the foundation coating is added. Next slide. And this photo is just showing again how the insulation is, is um, installed. And this, this insulation right here will be installed right here. And there will be, um, there, again, the foundation coating is following the um, finish grade. Next slide. A uh, backfilling, and you can see that we're backfilling with, we are backfilling with native material here, but it is well-drained, it's a um, pit run. But what you really wanna look at is um, this, which is a tarp from some farmers in around north of Calgary. Um, and they're tarps that they couldn't use anymore. They're hay tarps and they have some holes in them. And we use that to protect the foam um, um, from the backfill. And um, it's a, a bit of a recycling um, project. And that is um, just some added protection to the foundation instead of a dimple mat, and we could talk about dimple mat later, but this is, that's, this is instead of doing that. Next slide. And then the tarp is covered with um, treated ply, again, where, where it's going to be, um, where the grade will, where the backfill will be. Next slide. So a couple uh, little notes to end off that um, series of photos, and one is that, um, on all the preserved wood foundations, there's a corner piece that has to go on to stabilize the corners. Uh, that's just a, um, something that happens all the time. And again, this is a, another photo of, of um, a field treatment of, of bearing and shear walls in the base, in the lower level. Next slide. So um, I know I'm rushing through this. I just want to be sure that you get to see everything. This uh, house is called, this is actually a, a, a shop with a little house attached. And it's called the Yak Shack uh, because there's some yaks on this farm. Next, next slide. And I wanted to show you this um, project because I'm kind of doing a reverse truss on this side. Um, this is the bearing wall on the outside instead of, of the um, inside. And we um, have the, the um, non-bearing whole portion of the wall on the inside. So wood foundations can do that. Again, balloon framed and the um, uh, shop that's behind the um, the project in the on the back side of the project. This whole portion is a is um, a pole shed. Does anybody know what a pole shed is? Very easy and less expensive to build than the normal building. And um, the house is built independently of the pole shed, and we just join them together. So so the pole shed has is um, a wood structure with wood footings as well. Next slide. Um, garages sometimes can be built with um, um, two, four foot walls. We were doing four foot walls in this case to be, get, be the low grade um, below um, frost level in this case with still an insulated skirt and just um, with plywood on both sides of the top with insulation. So um, the uh, backfill will be in about here and all of the uh, fill for um, this project will go right through the studs. Um, that's a, that's a pretty normal way of, of doing um, wood foundations for garages. Next slide. And this same project, um, this contractor likes to use a, a little pony wall inside and outside of, of uh, foundations to support the edge of the slab. And in this case, it's for a sidewalk. Um, and you can see that this is a concrete footing. In this case, this, uh, oop, this, this project used concrete footings instead of um, wood footings. And um, you can see that there's a mat underneath um, that, um, that for drainage in this case and gravel. And next slide. Um, same project, concrete footing, blue skin on the outside of this foundation. And the blue skin is wrapped around the footing, the top of the footing, just so that water can't get into um, uh, underside of the wood plates. And there's gravel underneath this footing. Okay, next slide. That's it for my presentation. So I had a hard time choosing photos and choosing projects and hopefully they haven't taken too long. Um, some of the information that some places that you might uh, find interesting to um, get more information. Um, there is a beer and BS uh, program on wood, preserved wood foundations. Um, Building Science, Joe uh, Seabrook had done an excellent article on wood foundations recently. And um, this is also the link to the um, 
Canadian Wood Council um, specifications for wood basements. So that's it, and thank you very much. Um, thanks for this opportunity, and uh, and I'm just doing, gonna plug Passive Buildings Canada and um, Passive Coast Alberta. Thank you.